one of them is badly gored. To lose any man is a disaster in a world where people live in tiny self-sustaining bands. Death and serious injury were the high price Homo erectus paid for living with such great beasts. Losing just one hunter could mean the difference between hunger and survival. Today, they've returned with two injured men and no meat. Close-up and personal hunting was hazardous in the extreme. Finds in Spain tell us few Homo erectus males lived beyond their teens. There's no evidence Homo erectus dug graves or held ceremonies for the dead. We'll never know if these earliest peoples felt the sense of loss left by a death, for they were still closer to the great beasts they shared the world with than to us today. Fires failed them in the hunt. There are things about it that are still a mystery to them. But they must master all its secrets if they're to survive. Over thousands of years, Homo erectus wrestled with the same problem, how to keep flames alight in damp air. It's been a disastrous hunt. For these early humans with no strong reasoning powers and no articulate speech, emotions like grief, anger, and happiness would have been fleeting moods. We'll never know exactly how Homo erectus communicated with each other, but conflict, even violence, was inevitable when people lived in such tightly knit groups and when hunts failed. Now you rule. Though they're not yet us, they're growing ever more like us, and conflict is human. The blame game's as old as man. They can see all the potential of fire as a weapon, but making it a reliable one still eludes them. Thousands of years of trial and error will provide the answer. It'll come from survival skills. They may have lacked concern about the dead, but we can be sure people living so close to nature had a vast knowledge of plants, of what was edible and what wasn't, the seasons of wild fruit and berries, and most importantly, the healing power of plants. This gooey substance is pine resin. Not only can it prevent infection, it's also the source of turpentine, a natural fuel.
Sí. We'll never know what really unlocked the secret they were looking for. An accident of nature, a lightning strike, careful observation, or just trial and error. But these Homo erectus have finally stumbled upon it. They've now mastered all the mysteries of fire. It keeps them warm, cooks their food, scares away predators, and with this one momentous discovery, nothing will ever be the same again. The rain is the ultimate test. Only one of them knows the source of the resin. She shares her knowledge of this decaying pine stump. Pine resin, like turpentine, has a distinctive smell. Problem solving, cooperation, and the sharing of knowledge will be essential to human survival. The pine resin will keep their torches alight much longer than before. This is the edge they need. The band are now well on the path to being skillful hunters. They're strong. They're fearless. They know exactly where to find their prey and when. They know how it reacts when chased. And they have the best weapon yet invented. Megaloceros has come face to face with a formidable lethal weapon. Not just fire, but fire plus the human brain. Hunting will become a way of life that will define humankind for the next 300,000 years. From dense accumulations of stone tools and animal bones, we know Homo erectus hunted in places like Boxgrove in southern England. There, 500,000 years ago, hunters preyed on large animals like deer and bison, driving some of them over a 300-foot cliff. From layer after layer of bones, we can tell the hunters came here time and time again. Europe's in the grip of the late Ice Age. Great ice sheets mantle Scandinavia and the Alps. Sub-zero winters last up to nine months. Homo erectus has long since died out. It was during a short summer that their evolutionary cousins, these Neanderthals, migrated to this river valley. Remaining skeletons tell us they were short and stocky. They rely on their powerful limbs for close-in stalking and hunting. And close still means danger. They hunt beasts like the giant step bison.
Their weapons are the most lethal yet. Stone-tipped spears that tear into hide and flesh. Six feet tall at the hump, Bison Priscus weighs more than one ton. It's close quarter combat. Their spears are too heavy to throw very far. They must lunge and jab. tip breaks off in the wound, causing profuse bleeding. For the Neanderthals, killing animals is about survival. The strongest hunter administers the final blow. These were good times for the Neanderthals. They never let down their guard for fear of lurking scavengers, their eyes constantly mapping the forest, searching for danger. These Neanderthal hunters are no longer just scavengers waiting for a turn at the carcass. They're super predators with no competition from other hominids yet. Early humans, including Neanderthals, lived in temporary camps out in the open. But Neanderthals, inhabiting a region with so many caves, could live in them, especially in winter. The cave would become the center of their world. There were only a few thousand Neanderthals in southern France. They lived in small family groups. High nitrogen content discovered in Neanderthal bones proves 85% of their diet was meat, which they supplemented with plants and berries. Neanderthals have a simple but effective toolkit, the most specialized yet, better crafted